Greetings and good morning to everyone. Um, uh, I'm very grateful and honored to be part of this uh, international course. And uh, I thank the organizers for inviting me for giving the lecture uh, uh, and making it part of, or making me part of the um, whole event. Um, I'm at uh, Precision HR. Uh, it's an health economics organization in Los Angeles also um, affiliated with Center for Collaborative Studies in Mathematical Biology, Illinois State University, as well as Intercollegiate Biomathematics Alliance. Uh, um, my website is given below. Uh, it's my actually full name, anujmubai.com, and more details of my research interest and the methods that I use can be found on my webpage. Also have a YouTube channel, so feel free to uh, subscribe to it, uh, as well as I'm on Twitter and LinkedIn. Happy to take any questions um, after the after my lecture. Um, you can send me through email, or, or I will be present even um, uh, later on in the in the uh, in the uh, in the international course event. So uh, today, my lecture is on um, defining what is sensitivity and uncertainty analysis. What type of uh, these methods are. Uh, what are the procedures one follow? Um, and mostly today I will be talking about is a global analysis rather than a local analysis. Um, and I will be focusing on two types of sensitivity analysis, uh, parameter sensitivity analysis and outcome sensitivity analysis. Parameter sensitivity analysis is usually referred in the literature as simply sensitivity analysis, whereas outcome sensitivity analysis is referred as an uncertainty analysis. And then um, after giving the procedure, I will talk about some examples from the epidemic modeling um, or in epidemics in, in the, what, what aspects we try to um, understand through the sensitivity analysis. Um, so I'll talk about a very well-known um, threshold quantity called as reproduction number, which is not time dependent. It doesn't vary over time. It's R naught. It's an initial number of how how bad is an outbreak, for example. So it is, it defines the intensity of the outbreak. And also some time variable, uh, varying outcome model outcomes that I will be also showing the results on. And then very interesting point that I will be talking about is from health economics studies, where we talk about cost effectiveness of interventions uh, and how we do the sensitivity analysis there. So, um, to give you a gist of what exactly is the sensitivity, there are many different types of sensitivity analysis in the literature. There's a parameter sensitivity analysis that means something to do with the parameters of the model that we are unsure about, or we are unable to estimate it precisely. Um, and therefore we do the parameter sensitivity analysis. Uh, then there is an observational sens sensitivity analysis. What that mean is when we measure the data, when we get the data in the field, we make error in measuring it. And those are the, um, that's an observations uh, or measurement errors. Um, that, and the analyzing that aspects is called as observational sensitivity analysis. Um, third different type of sensitivity analysis is structural. Uh, how do you know which model is correct? So you want to try the structure of the model. You want to try different permutation combinations of the structure of the model. And that is what is called as structural sensitivity analysis. Um, and then finally, it's an outcome uh, sensitivity analysis. So model output, how is that varying based on uh, uncertainty in different aspects of the model? Okay. And again, these, uh, these um, boxes that I was animating, uh, this uh, circle um, showing the methods for doing parameter sensitivity analysis, this is the methods for doing observation sensitivity analysis, and then the methods for structural sensitivity analysis, uh, finally outcome sensitivity. Now I'll not be talking about all of these sensitivity analysis, but I will be talking about primarily um, parameters sensitivity analysis and outcome sensitivity analysis. Those two I will be talking about, parameters and outcome. So what, are the, what is the precise definition and types of sensitivity analysis? So this picture gives a very important uh, description about what exactly is the purpose of doing sensitivity. 
So uh, it's basically, since anal this type of analysis, after you are done with it, you understand the behavior. How, if you made an error in estimating the parameter, um, how is the, or uh, structure of the model, how is the behavior of the system changing? Um, it helps us determining parameter which are important and more accurate, uh, which are needs to be fine-tuned. Um, these are very important critical parameters, whereas some parameters are less effective to the outcomes. So which ones are, are the critical ones? And um, if you know the critical ones, you can go back and do the data, redo the data collection process and get the better data for those parameters who are most sensitive. And then what would be the errors in the model forecast? It also tells you that. Uh, so there's many, many important characteristics of the system. The system is a model system um, that uh, the sensitivity analysis is telling you about. So in this picture, if you see the input, um, suppose there is one input parameter, which is on the x-axis and on the y-axis, there is a, um, there is a um, output uncertainty. Uh, so if you vary input in its distribution or it's in its range, um, if you get a very low sensitivity of the y-axis, so y-axis is changing very little, then we call it as a lower sensitivity with respect to the input parameters. And if the variation is quite high, this is a quite high variations in the outcomes, then we say it, the varying in the same range this, uh, the outcome is varying quite a lot. In that case, the input parameter is very sensitive okay, to the outcome, to the particular outcome that we are interested in. Okay? So there is relationship between uh, variation or the errors in the input um, and how is that affecting the outcome. So there are different types of uh, uh, uncertainty and sensitivity. And why we talk about different types of them? Well, there could be knowledge uncertainty. For example, in COVID-19, initially, there was lots of information about how the pathogen is spreading were unknown. So that's a knowledge uncertainty. And in that case, model structure could be unsure of, well, the model might be unsure of model structure or even you will not get a precise estimate of parameters. So that is the first type of um, um, uncertainty, knowledge and security. And these two are the part of this knowledge and certainty. Then there is a natural variability might be there in the model. For example, over time or over space, right? So that type of uncertainty you could have or decision uncertainty. Maybe there are different goals uh, to, to focus on goals of an objective of why we are doing the modeling work, right? So that uncertainty in those, uh, not sure about what precisely goals will be answering the real life question might result in the uncertainty in that decision, okay? And the values of preference, which one needs to be preferred more than, uh, which goal needs to be preferred more than. So there are three different types of uncertainty that we talked about and we try to capture. Whereas on the sensitivity analysis, it's about um, whether one way, one way means one in parameters is uh, you want to see the impact of one parameter on the outcome, or you want to do multiple way. That means you are want to see the many parameters when they vary, how they um, impact the output. And then there is a probabilistic sensitivity, or it is also called the global sensitivity, where um, in all of them, uh, all the parameters that you are uncertain about vary it in a random fashion. Okay, so in multi-way, uh, you are varying it in some order, in some deterministic sense. Whereas in probabilistic sense, you are assuming that all the uh, unknown parameters or less known parameters. Uh, from the estimates perspective, uh, you are defining the distribution and, and doing, uh, assuming it as a random variable to see what is the impact on the outcome. So these are uh, different types of uncertainty and sensitivity analysis. So the precise definition of uncertainty or outcome sensitivity analysis, as I discussed before, we will be focusing on today uh, only on the outcome sensitivity, how the outcomes are varying 
and we will be st send, uh, thinking about a parameter sensitivity analysis. So, uh, uncertainty, how is the uncertainty in the output uh, model can be a portion to different source of uncertainty in the input model input. So how is this different sources of uncertainty in the model input is, is leading to um, what is the uh, contribution by different types of uncertainty on the outcome variable. So that's called as an uncertainty. So how is the uncertainty outcome look like? Okay. Whereas parameter sensitivity is used for ranking the, the inputs ranking the inputs in terms of which one is the most sensitive versus which one is the least sensitive parameter, input parameter. So again, uncertainty analysis is on outcome, whereas parameter sensitivity analysis or sensitivity analysis is on the inputs. That's very important distinction, outcome and input. Okay, so just this caricature is, uh, so the question comes, how do you measure it? How do you measure it uh, in mathematically? So just this caricature is very, for example, you calibrated uh, one parameter. Let's say the parameter is P, you calibrated it. Calibrated means estimated it from the empirical study or empirical field data. Uh, and it turns out to be P0. And while you were estimating, you make an error in a uh, certain error. So error is, let's say, um, PK. I mean, so you make this much error. So the sensitivity analysis measures if you vary, uh, if there is an error of this much in the input, what is the uh, error in the output variables? So the ratio of in, uh, ratio of output, relative output over relative input is called as a sensitivity index. Okay. Now, this is just a a basic understanding, but this become more complex when the risk, this relationship is highly nonlinear. Uh, the, uh, the relationship between input and output is highly nonlinear. This becomes very, um, this formula becomes more sophisticated. But the idea is to calculate some kind of index to say the importance of the parameters or how badly or how good um, the param input parameter is impacting the outcome. So uh, let's, I think by now you might have been exposed to epidemic model in general. So for example, this is an SIR type model, left hand side, this is an SIR. One of the major outcome is reproduction number. And for this model, the reproduction number is R0 is beta mu. And these are parameter, beta, nu, mu, and alpha are parameters of the model. Okay. So, so if you make an error in estimating these parameters, uh, one of these parameters, it will make, uh, it will give you an error in estimating the R naught, right? So the question is how much sensitive uh, reproduction number is on uh, the parameters that you are unknown about. So you may be knowing two parameter very precisely, whereas other two, you may not be knowing it or you will be less knowing it. So maybe then you want to study the uncertainty or sensitivity of those two parameter, which is less precisely known on the reproduction number. Okay. So uh, there are many methods that we use for uncertainty uh, analysis. Um, these are uncertainty methods. These are basically plotting and histograms and writing the summary statistics of the histograms of an outcome. Um, while varying, uh, when you vary the input parameters, what is the variation you are observing in the uh, outcome variable? So it can be quantified by histogram. It can be quantified by confidence interval or credible intervals of the outcome variables. You can show it by that, or you can show even by box and whistle plot for an outcome variables. So that's um, one way of um, uh, computationally representing the uncertainty. Now sensitivity analysis methods, again, there are many methods. I'm just listing some examples here. On the other hand, sensitivity analysis methods, there are like methods like standard regression coefficients. Uh, there's classification regression tree method, there are partial rank correlation coefficients, there are EFAST. EFAST stands for extended um, four-year amplitude sensitivity test. Okay, so there are many, uh, all, there's no test which is kind of one size fit all. Um, and they have all pros and cons associated with it. 
partial rank correlation coefficient uh, is primarily used in the epidemic models, for example. So we will be talking today actually about partial rank correlation coefficients. Okay, so again, uh, so in this probabilistic or a global sensitivity analysis, the structure look like this, the procedure look like this. So you start with, uh, first is assigning the distribution to the input parameters. Now, input, not all input parameters of the model, but only those which are less precise, or you are uncertain about their estimates. And then you assign certain distributions of it. Uh, these are the, suppose there are N of those input parameters of the model. So for example, model is R0, reproduction number, and there are uh, four parameters here, let's say, and each one of them are uncertain. And so the input distribution. And then what you do is proper sampling from the distribution of input parameter. You sample certain number of points from these distribution randomly, and these are marginal distribution and computing uh, and then use those uh, values in the formula and you compute the output values for each of the sample output variable for each of the samples in the, in the model and then use that uh, outputs values so you will get so you will use the model you substitute these samples suppose i take one value of theta one one value of theta two and one value of theta n and then use the model to compute one value of output variables. An output could be many of those variables, not necessarily one, could be many outcomes. For example, in SIR model, you could talk about infected compartment after 20 days or susceptible compartment after one year, right? So the size of it, size of susceptible and size of infected after a certain number of days. So there could be many, many different outcomes from a same model, right? Um, so, um, so these are the output distribution for one value, you are calculating one value, but then you take the different sample for input from these initial distributions, you get a different outcome. Here. And you can use all those different values. Let's say you do thousand samples, you get a, uh, you can make a histogram of an output variable, right? And then you use these distribution of outcome, what you empirically have obtained it, and the input distribution, and then you perform some sensitivity analysis on it, okay? Uh, and it looks like a ranking of a system based on a bar, and the height is the sensitivity index of each one of the parameters to one particular outcome or many outcomes, basically. Okay, well, the sampling is very critical in this type of method because once you, uh, as I said here, uh, assigning distribution is the first step. Second step is a proper sampling from these distribution of input parameter. So, um, so you, there are many sampling methods also. So one is called Monte Carlo sampling, which is just random sampling from the distribution that you have assigned. Um, and then basically uh, drawing uh, samples from that predefined distribution in Monte Carlo. But the problem in the Monte Carlo is, suppose this is the type of distribution and, and it looks like a very much like a normal distribution, then since you are doing it only finite number of time, limited number of time sampling, thousand time or one million time, you may end up concentrating because it is, has a more height, you may end up having uh, parameters only in the middle, for example, by chance. It could be possibility, right? Because you cannot run this sampling in finite times because computer has, I mean, you have a certain time only, a uh, finite time to show your results. Um, so the question is, well, uh, you want to vary um, basically in the whole range. You want to have samples that are following in the whole range. But because sampling is carried out on your computer, which is not a perfect algorithm, Therefore, you might end up by chance in certain one region and not cover the whole range, right? So to, to, uh, um, to rectify that problem of not concentrating your sample in a certain place of the distribution, rather than spread over whole range, you use a Latin hypercube. Latin hypercube is forces you to spread out in the whole, whole space. And basically what it does is, it's basically suppose I want to sample n points, let's say 10,000 points, then it divides the range into 10,000 parts, equal parts, and then you sample, when you sample it, 
it blocks that wherever this sample is taken from, it blocks that thing and it doesn't sample again from that block. Okay, so next time you sample, it, it samples uh, on other uh, parts of the distribution. So suppose the first sample comes from here, right? So the second time you sample it, it will not come from this portion. It may come from here or it may come from all these three of them, right? So, um, and then, then third, uh, suppose second one come from here. So these, this first one and this one is blocked now. Now you cannot sample from here. So it now samples from remaining of, this, uh, of the division. So suppose this, this, and this have labeled, that means. And then third time you sample it, it samples from one of the three and it blocks that one, then third one, and then so on and so forth. So it covers the whole range properly. And that's the benefit of using that method. Okay. So again, so uh, the goal here we are trying to do is investigate the impact of total output based on changes in the input factors. And there are, from epidemic modeling perspective, we are mainly concerned with two types of outcomes. One, which is constant in time, which is not varying in time. For example, reproduction number is fixed over time. Uh, R effective is another reproduction number, which varies over time. But I'm here talking about R0, which doesn't vary. Or you can talk about if I'm interested in sensitivity analysis of an I compartment over time, which is changing over time, right? So you can study the sensitivity of IT over time also. Okay, so this is an example and uh, we'll show you the step. I'll show you the step of uh, doing the uncertainty analysis on the reproduction number. So for example, you have input here. Uh, suppose all of those four parameters you are uncertain about. And I have got this distribution from the empirical studies, the best possible. And if there is not much available, then you take a uniform distribution over plausible ranges. So this is for the beta distribution, this is for nu, this is for mu, and this is for alpha. There are four input parameters and the output parameters as well. So you sample the parameters from each of these ones and then mm, uh, uh, substitute it in this formula, you get one value of R number, right? And if you do re uh, repeat the sampling process from each of these distribution again and again, let's say 10,000 times, then you get 10,000 values of reproduction number. Okay, and that 10,000 histogram looks like this. Okay, so very simple ideas. Okay, so what is steps we follow? Let's see exactly the step precisely. So design the experiment. You have to know what is your input and what is your output. How many parameters are in the input and how many parameters are in the output. So you have to design that experiment. Second is to appropriately assign the uh, density functions or distributions of the input variables. And then you'd have to choose the correct sampling methods. Um, and fourth point is, uh, how do you quantify the distribution of output variables due to the uncertainty in the input? And then that is called as an uncertainty. And then you kind of rank each of the input parameters and that ranking is called the sensitivity analysis. And you repeat this process until you get a stable results. So uh, again, so design of experiments. So suppose there are three variables, Y is an output variables and, uh, um, um, uh, and model is looks like this, Y equal to function, so reproduction. Of. So this is the design of an experiment. You have to list the input, you have to list the output variable and you have to list the model. So that's the first step, design of experiment. Second step, which is uh, involves assigning the distribution to the input. How do you design the distribution of an input parameter? That's the second step. So this is the second step here. Now this is, I'm giving you an example. Suppose um, uh, uh, this is, a, um, Kalazar is a disease called as leishmaniasis. And, um, and this is a study, uh, this study is giving this table, which is showing uh, time taken to recover for a patient's recover under treatment. Uh, and um, so uh, basically what this parameter is what it is uh, we are trying to find the distribution of the rate from I to R, okay, under treatment. So they have um, time taken from zero to six months, how many totals are there and so on and so forth. So this, we have plotted it 
time zero to six months, time six to 12 months, six months to one year, uh, 12 to 18 months, uh, one to 1 1.5 years, 18 above is the same. And then uh, basically there's no need for gender, uh, you can add those numbers, but the idea is it is giving you a distribution histogram from the data. So this parameters, how do you use the data from an empirical? You have to make sense of this parameter and go about looking for it in the, in the literature. Okay, so this, this is a very good example, which is assigning the uh, probability distribution of the input variable. Okay, once you have this distribution, you can sample. Now this is a discrete distribution, but you could have more complex distributions and you can fit it to the standard normal also. Um, but or you can use an empirical distribution that is your choice um, of as a model okay the next step um, uh, requires uh, basically evaluating the outcome variables and these are showing just a simple distribution box plot you know what is a box plot means uh, 25 percentile 75 percentile median mean so it is giving you us how is the outcome is varying for example you can talk about summary statistics. And then there is also many times people reflect the uncertainty using entropy of a distribution. Entropy means how smooth is the outcome distribution, right? Whether it is rugged uh, or whether it is a uniform distribution. So for example, if all the data of the histogram is in one cell, so suppose there are bins in which the histograms is, uh, is shown. And if all the data is in one bin or one cell, then the uh, entropy is zero. Okay. Whereas if the uh, if all the uh, if the data is distributed evenly in these bins, then it is h is one. So it is how rugged or how smooth is the distribution captures is captured by the entropy. So this is a, a way of measuring uncertainty. So what we do is we generate samples using some methods um, and we are talking about, let's say, how do you find the sensitivity index now? And so we use the uh, partial rank correlation coefficient for doing that. Now, um, the relationship between the input and output could be nonlinear, um, but mo monotonic relationship. That is, these are the two uh, assumptions uh, um, if you know these two assumptions, then only you can take, uh, you can use partial rank correlation. Okay. Um, so sometimes it is, um, it is, uh, we don't know uh, whether the relationship is, uh, but again, the correlation coefficient, the behind the scene, uh, the assumption is it has a linear relationship, right? But this rank correlation coefficients, results in you, you can also use a nonlinear relationship uh, and because the word rank is used here. So instead of actual value, you are using a rank uh, values uh, and you are finding the correlation between the two input and output basically. Okay. And it is partial, that means you may, you may have more than one parameters that are uncertain. And so you are varying the impact of one while taking into account the impact of other. Okay, so that's why the word partial is coming into it. So the, the step involved finding the rank of the input and output data, and then finding the, uh, basically the correlation coefficient, uh, the partially. And again, these are the actual stuff that is done, um, but many times, uh, we use uh, software package such as SAS or, or Stata or even R to find um, the partial rank correlation coefficients. But these steps defines what is going on in that packages itself, right? But the end of the result is that partial rank correlation coefficient lies between minus one and one, okay? So for example, uh, the reproduction number formula sensitivity index is shown in this curve. So there were, there were four parameter and uh, a sensitivity index using partial rank correlation coefficients of beta, nu, mu and alpha are shown here. And this is the zero and it is lying between minus one and one because it's a correlation coefficient, right? Um, and so if you can see the high value is of beta uh, and it is positive. 
So beta is highly correlated with reproduction number, right? As absolute value of PRCC, this is a PRCC values on the y-axis, is higher than the corresponding values of other parameters, right? And beta is positively related uh, with R. So that means one unit change in beta will result in 0.8 positive or 0.85 or 85 um, units of R naught change. Okay, so one unit change in beta will result in 0.85 units of change in reproduction. Okay, and this is the highly correlated one. Now, if turns out, suppose one parameter mu is less than 0.5 or point, uh, is very small, let's say 0.2, then it is insignificant. That is not very sensitive parameters to the reproduction number. Okay, so these are the things that we can draw from the, from the final results. Okay, so let's go over the example. So this is the work that uh, uh, we published. Uh, it's my work on West Nile virus, where we were studying the role of domestic and wild population birds uh, in the spread of West Nile virus. And it's a model, very simple model. The vector mosquitoes is there, and there's a domestic bird and there is a wild birds. And we were modeling uh, Northeast in US. Okay, and the reproduction number for this model is very ugly and it looks like something like this. Okay, so we want to know uh, the sensitivity of many of these model parameters, which we don't know about, uh, on the estimate of reproduction number. Okay, so we found in the literature the estimates of these model parameters here. These are all model parameters that are going in the reproduction number formula. And then we did this methods of PRCC and we found the distribution of RD um, or R naught, sorry, distribution of R naught uh, using this formula by, by sampling from these distribution and using this formula to get the distribution. Okay. okay. Now, since to, so this was, this was an uncertainty analysis of the reproduction number, right? Uh, now, this is the sensitivity of reproduction number with respect to this, the ranking of the parameters. And you can see that it is arranged in the ascending orders um, of the absolute value, but the y-axis is a PRCC, partial rank correlation coefficients, and the x-axis is the parameter. Okay, so if you can see these seems like an insensitive parameters. In our statistical significance level, we use 0.5, um, and these were anything between minus 0.5 and 5, they were less significant or insignificant, uh, whereas anything bigger than them were. So it turns out these four parameters, our test results were saying these are significant results and, uh, and it is also giving you the ranking of sensitivity. For example, B, the biting rate was supposed, was turned out to be very sensitive to the reproduction number and so on and so forth. Okay, now there's another examples uh, in this. Um, uh, this is coming from a study in 2004. It is basically uh, talking about uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis spreading in lungs and lymph nodes and how is the immune response uh, impacting uh, the behavior of the spread of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis and in lungs. So, so basically in the lungs, what is going on and in the lymph node is it going on and then what is the blood? So there are different equations for different parts of the models. There are many equations were there and there were, um, uh, there were variables associated with macrophages. There were different type of macrophages. There were dendritic cells. These are important components for the, um, uh, for the immune response. Uh, and there's lymphotic, uh, lymphocytes, there were bacteria itself, uh, and there were uh, cytokines. So these were considered in the model. There, there were the equation, differential equation for each one of the variables. There were different types of variables here. So it was a very complex model. Um, and so it was very difficult to precisely, and many times inside the body, it is very, very difficult to estimate some of the parameters, for example, growth rate of macrophages. Uh, the parameter associated with it, or the killing of um, uh, infected cells by lymphocytes, CD8-4 cells, for example. So, so, um, so the sensitivity analysis really helped in understanding it. So, for example, one of the results that uh, authors were interested in over time, how are one of the variable BE, 
And so what it was BE? It was bacteria load changing over time inside the body, bacteria load. How was bacteria load? And these are coupled equations. So bacteria load was here, extracellular bacteria load here. And I'm showing one just example how the sensitivity um, look like, analysis look like. So basically there were five parameter, K12, K3, K2, and all these five parameters, which were, they were not sure about the estimates. So they were varying these five parameters over the range and sampling it for each time point and computing the sensitivity index for each time point. And they were doing it for time after time after time over until they reach the end of the time. Okay, so this, this is the sensitivity index, the PRCC value of the outcome variable B as a function of these five parameters. Okay, and it is changing the sensitivity index is how is it changing? So you can draw many conclusions here. What is happening to the variable BE over time? How the sensitivity of the BE variable or bacteria load changing over time? Okay, uh, with respect to these five parameters. So for example, um, this parameter, which is K2, is most sensitive uh, in the initial time and uh, and also uh, actually it is sensitive all most of the time except in this small region when it is very close here right okay uh, otherwise it is av away from zero means sensitive away from zero either you are uh, on negative side away from zero or uh, the correlation coefficient is um, is one means highly positively correlated correlated minus one means highly negative correlated right so um uh, and this, uh, how is this thing? And you can study these features uh, or understand the system as a function of these five parameters very well. Okay. Now the third example is sensitivity uh, in evaluation of outcomes of health economics study. Health economics is also very important when we do some epidemic models because the budget is not uh, uh, is is limited in every way. So. Um, some of the costs that we are interested in many times are medication direct cost, non-medical costs like transportation to the treatment, indirect costs like wages lost and so on and so forth, intangible costs like pain and suffering. And you can quantify all these things in the literature and you can have a model of the cost also, right? So there is an example here. And again, it depends on whose, on whose behalf you are doing the study. For example, patients, uh, for patient you are doing cost effectiveness analysis you want to do for the patients or you want to do for the uh, society as a general so there are different perspective of the cost so this is an example in this table where um, there's a treatment was given to one cohort and then there was another cohort there was placebo was given okay and they over time they wanted to see uh, which one is cost, if this new treatment is cost effective, then not doing any treatment, right? So the cost of doing the treatment comes out to be, uh, over a certain period of time, comes out to be $21,000. And the placebo group comes out 20000 So the difference in the cost was 502 over a certain period of time. And the years of life say, uh, um, for the patients in this group versus patient in this group was this. And so uh, the difference of these two quantity was 0.05. Okay. So what is cost effectiveness means whether this treatment is effective or not is the ratio of the difference of the cost versus ratio of the effectiveness. In this case, effectiveness is the years of life. Okay. So this was $10,000 uh, per life year saved. This comes out to be that. Okay. So we use these cost and effectiveness plays. The change, delta means change in effectiveness on the x-axis and delta uh, cost is the change in cost. And basically the change in effectiveness versus change in cost. So if you are in this quadrant, this is more costly and less effective. So of course, standard treatment dominant. That means you don't want a new treatment because the new cost treatment is more costly than less effective. If you are here, uh, the new treatment is uh, less costly and more effective. Of course, we will choose the new treatment here, right? So, uh, and if you are um, uh, if you are here, then there is a trade-off. 
basically less costly and less effective. And if you are here, then again, etc. Usually there is a diagonal line um, and uh, you reject, um, you don't go for the new treatment if you are on this side of it. And if you accept, if you are in it, and this is the point of $10,000 here, um, that a point. So you will accept in this previous study, uh, this turns out to be uh, 10,000, which is coming out to be this point here. Again, this is scaled cost actually. So it turns out to be like this. So, um, so you reject here and accept here. So in this particular examples, I will accept the new treatment. It is more cost effective to use it. Okay. Another aspects that we try to talk to you about, suppose you am interested in uh, outcome cost, uh, and we want to see how is the role of the each of the parameters. Suppose there are eight parameters on which the outcome depend on. So we vary one parameter at a time in its range and see its impact on the outcome, right? All other parameters will be fixed. But if you vary from uh, lower values of parameter one to higher value of parameter one, the outcome vary from this length to this length. These are outcome values, basically. And, and so on, you are ranking this thing as you are changing one at a time, each parameter. So it is called as one at a time or local sensitivity analysis. And, um, and this gives you which one is the most sensitive. Again, this is local. Uh, and uh, if, if you don't have a computational problem, then this is fine. But this gives a less information as compared to probability sensitivity in which you simultaneously vary all the uh, parameters and then sample it and you draw this effectiveness and cost in the form of this kind of um, dots here. And suppose there are three strategies. Um, and so there are three uh, cloud you will form. And these are the mean value. The circles are the mean value of this cloud. Okay, So you can study the how, which strategy is better. Uh, and which study is effective or cost effective basically. So these are the output results from, uh, from the economic thing. So I'll stop here. Thank you for your attention. And I hope um, it, uh, this lecture was interesting. Feel free to send me an email or uh, let me know if you have any questions or not. So thank you very much. <laughs>